In the ever-evolving world of international diplomacy, there's seldom a dull moment, especially when a major player like Canada finds itself in the spotlight. The intricate dance of political maneuverings is always a spectacle, but currently the spotlight seems focused intently on Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. He finds himself at the epicenter of a diplomatic whirlwind, a spectacle that has not only captivated but also sparked debates across the globe. The latest revelation? A tense diplomatic showdown with India that has everyone talking, tweeting, and perhaps even dusting off old carrier pigeons in a desperate effort to ensure their opinions are heard loud and clear. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Prepare yourself for an unfolding saga packed with extradition cases, intricate political maneuverings, and the dramatic expulsion of diplomats. Strap in as we delve into this intricate tale, not only dividing nations, but also dominating news headlines globally leaving citizens and analysts alike to wonder about the future trajectory of Canada's diplomatic direction. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. As Canada and India find themselves at a diplomatic impasse, numerous questions abound regarding how Trudeau navigated the country into such turbulent international waters. Insights from India's former High Commissioner to Canada, Sanjay Kumar Verma, suggest that a series of political missteps and misplaced priorities might be responsible for the current state of affairs. Verma did not hold back in his criticisms indicating that mistrust forms the core issue defining the current tense political relationship. He further argued that Trudeau's administration may have been overly sympathetic to seek separatists within Canada, a subject as sensitive for India as perhaps finding an empty Tim Hortons during peak hours might be for Canadians. We've seen similar disputes stir emotions and political action in the past, but this one has exceptionally broad implications. These strained ties do not exist in isolation but intersect with deeper historical and cultural complexities that fuel this diplomatic tempest. Yet the plot thickens as further intrigue reveals itself. Trudeau is mired in accusations allegedly relying on intelligence rather than substantial evidence regarding the 2022 murder of Sikh leader Hardeep Singh Nijjar in British Columbia. If, High Commissioner, you have not done anything wrong, why are you not cooperating with Canadian authorities? Uh, so there are a couple of things we needed to see some evidence uh, on the basis of which we can uh, converse with uh, our Canadian counterparts. Unfortunately, not a shred of evidence has been shared with us. Uh, any evidence which is shared has to be legally acceptable. Uh, we are a country of uh, rule of law uh, and so is Canada. So therefore anything which is acceptable in the Canadian court of law would largely also be acceptable in the Indian court of law and therefore that evidence will work. Unfortunately, we have not got anything from any Canadian official which can lead us to a better uh, spot. Such evidence, reportedly closer to hearsay than solid proof, adds a thriller-esque twist to what already feels like a political drama worthy of a screenplay. The prospect of basing serious allegations on such shaky grounds might appear more suited to a fictional context rather than real-world diplomacy, where concrete proof is paramount. Despite the lack of hard evidence, the ripple effects of these allegations are felt across continents, unsettling diplomatic conventions and clouding mutual trust between the nations involved. This unfolding drama extends beyond the realm of political discourse into being a touchstone of public concern, prompting citizens to scrutinize the integrity of governmental intelligence. Next on the diplomatic chessboard are Canada's efforts to coerce India into compliance by advocating for cooperation on multiple extradition cases. India, however, contends that Trudeau, is weaving the extradition narrative as a diversionary tactic to shift blame. In this high-stakes diplomatic ballet of he said, she said, the ramifications extend beyond mere political image management. It's severely straining an economically valuable bilateral relationship. The notion that Trudeau might have allowed these diplomatic tensions to escalate to unprecedented heights as part of a strategy to secure votes from new Canadians edges on conspiracy, raising eyebrows and questions about electoral motivations. I think... It is obvious that the government of India made a fundamental error in thinking that they could engage in supporting criminal activity against Canadians here on Canadian soil, whether it be murders or extortion or other violent acts. It is absolutely unacceptable for any country, for any democracy, that upholds the rule of law. That is why we have taken such significant measures, why the RCMP chose to come out today and disrupt the pattern of Indian diplomats collecting through 
um, questionable and illegal means, information on Canadian citizens that were then fed to criminal organizations that would then take violent actions from extortion to murder against Canadians. No country, particularly not a democracy that upholds the rule of law, can accept this fundamental violation of its sovereignty. Canada fully accepts and respects the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of India. We expect India to do the same. In this case, they did not. Economic specialists note with concern how these strained ties could impact crucial trade agreements affecting everything from technological collaborations to agricultural exports that have historically bolstered both economies. Adding a splash of sarcasm to this international incident, Canada saw fit to expel five Indian diplomats from its soil. Not to be outdone, India promptly reciprocated, demonstrating just how magnanimous international diplomacy can be when tempers soar. Though Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie painted the move diplomatically, describing the situation as nations being on notice, behind the scenes whispers liken it more to a schoolyard standoff, with each nation stubbornly refusing to blink first in this international stare down. Such tit-for-tat measures serve as stark reminders of the delicate balance inherent in diplomatic engagements where ego and national pride often overshadow pragmatic resolutions. Observers of global politics lament how such incidents detract from concerted efforts needed to address critical global issues like climate change and global security. Further complicating matters are the whispers of foreign interference that add yet another dimension to already turbulent political waters. Rumors swirl about alleged Indian interference in a Canadian conservative leadership contest, yet, as with any captivating political intrigue, the verified details remain few and far between. Um, and now that the RCMP has gone public with its allegations against India, yeah. how worried are you that Canadians uh, are, are still in danger here by agents of the Indian well, there was definitely uh, a threat, and that's exactly why uh, the RCMP decided to take the um, uh, extraordinary measure of making public the fact that Canadians were being intimidated, victim of extortion, or even uh, receiving death threats because uh, in Indian agents or agents um, and, and diplomats uh, from India uh, were linked to these uh, criminal actions. We've never seen that in our history. That level of transnational repression cannot happen on Canadian soil. We've seen it elsewhere in Europe. Russia has done that in Germany and the, U uh, in the UK. Uh, but uh, we needed to stand firm on this issue. And since the beginning of uh, this entire um, um, episode with uh, India, uh, I said that we would abide by three principles, which are first, to seek the truth, to make sure that Canadians would know what happened in the Najjar case and, uh, you know, uh, linked to his burner, but also to make sure that uh, Canadians would be aware of what Indian agents, including uh, diplomats, are doing on Canadian soil. Second objective would be um, to make sure that Canadians would be protected. And I'm happy to see that the RCMP decided to take the decision of going forward and making public what was happening here in Canada. And thirdly, which is fundamental also, particularly when it comes to uh, relationship with other countries, it is the protection and the defense of our sovereignty. And so these three principles are at the core of what we're doing, and that's what we'll continue to do going forward. Can we expect more Indian diplomats to be expelled from uh, Canada at this point? Well, you know, they're clearly on notice. So six of them have been expulsed, uh, expelled, um, including the High Commissioner in Ottawa. Others were mainly from Toronto and Vancouver. And uh, clearly, we won't tolerate any diplomats that are uh, in contravention of the Vienna Convention. Uh, and clearly, uh, any diplomats from any party from around, uh, any country, sorry, or from around the world, uh, that would be putting the lives and uh, basically um, the, the lives and and uh, of Canadians at risk. The specter of foreign influence seems to be the new ghost story haunting Canadian politics. Omnipresent yet elusive, leaving Canadians collectively pondering the true extent of international meddling in their domestic affairs. Analysts stress the urgency of addressing these concerns with transparency and bipartisan collaboration 
to both safeguard electoral integrity and restore public confidence in democratic processes. This narrative raises probing questions about the resilience of institutional frameworks against external manipulations. Critics have lambasted Justin Trudeau for actions seemingly designed to provoke a foreign adversary, akin to poking a bear for the sake of a spectacle, with little prospect of yielding favorable results. This particular approach has not delivered the expected outcomes. Critics argue that the Prime Minister could have unraveled this diplomatic knot with dialogue and negotiation, rather than what appears to be a preference for public posturing. After all, the foundation of enduring international relationships is rightly built on steadfast diplomatic exchanges rather than emotional anecdotes delivered within the parliament halls. Seasoned diplomats argue that resorting to sensationalism depreciates the potential for sincere engagements that could serve mutual interests more constructively. As this story continues to evolve, the need for restoring diplomacy to its rightful place as a tool for peace and cooperation becomes ever more apparent. The critical question is whether Canada and India can repair their frayed ties before the fallout adversely impacts their economic exchanges, a pressing concern for both nations. The rising call for stability and focus on constructive policymaking resonates widely among citizens who recognize the intrinsic value of fostering harmonious international relations over populist rhetoric. Well, that's all for now. Do you think these kinds of dramatic events are expected from Canada's diplomatic playbook? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.